All right, my dudes, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the week three class video recording. This will also act as the tutorial for your lip sync animation exercise. Okay, so if we come over to Canvas, taking a look at week three lip sync animation, what we're gonna be doing today is learning how to create crisp, believable lip sync animation. Now, what I'm gonna need you to do is to please download this lip sync rig file over here. If you've done this in the past, please keep in mind that as of this recording on Monday the 26th, I updated this file Monday the 26th uh, this morning. All right, so if, you've, if you had pre-downloaded this file perhaps in week two, you will need to download it again. So please do download this file. That's what we'll be working with. Once completed, you will be able to obviously <laughs> access the video over here. Um, and then once our animation is done, we will discuss the assignments. All right, so just to go through those quickly, uh, the first assignment we've got is the lip sync animation class exercise. All I need you to do is to watch this video, follow along, render out what you finish and submit it to this class exercise, just so that I can tell that you have indeed engaged with the lesson. The progress mark assignment you'll see is very similar to the idle animation assignment. Essentially, now that you've practiced lip sync animation by completing your class exercise, you're going to apply what you've learned and animate your own version of the lip sync animation. You're going to be doing this by using the audio clip that you have chosen, as well as the reference footage that you recorded for yourself so that you can uh, have that as a guide for your facial expressions. Please make sure to use Adobe Media Encoder when rendering. Here's the class tutorial again. Obviously, once this video has been published, the link over here will work and you'll be able to watch this video again. Okay. Please note that as mentioned with the idle animation, the progress mark lip sync animation is going to be due again at the end of this term. All right, so whatever mark and feedback you get for this submission, you can then go apply to your file, re-render it and resubmit it at the end of the term. Okay, cool. Let's dive into After Effects today. Now, the file that you have downloaded is um, going to then open up in here and you'll see that we thankfully don't have that many layers to work with for our character. Now, if I just quickly unshy these layers over here, we do in fact have a large number of layers for this file, but thankfully, because when we work with characters, we're working with a rig, which means that um, a single layer would be able to drive multiple layers at a time, we're in fact only going to need to be working with the layers that you see on screen when you open your file. To walk these, uh, to sort of like walk you through what these are, to unlock these, layer one is the face null. If I move that around, it will move the eyes and the mouth with it. If I turn on the visibility for layers two, three, and four, layer two is our pupils null. That will move our pupils around. Layer three is our top eyelids, which will allow us to blink the top eyelids. And layer four is the bottom eyelids, which, as you might guess, allow you to interact with the bottom eyelids. Okay. Then we have layer five. This is our mouth shape layer. Now you'll see that this has got a, a strange little composition icon over here. This is a pre-composition. If I double click on it, it will open up the mouth shapes comp in our timeline. And all this is, is all the different mouth shapes that we are going to be using for our animation today. All right, we're not gonna mess with anything inside of um, the mouth shapes layer. So please don't play with any of these layers. It's just there to show you what they do. Layer 20 is the head, and you'll see that I've parented everything so that if I move the head, the face will follow. So if I want, I can move my character across the screen and the face will follow along. And then lastly, we have our layer background over here. Um, I'm just gonna put the head back towards the center of the screen here, like so. Um, so this is our background layer. You'll see in the title, if you hit um, enter where you can rename the layer, you'll see that I've labeled it as you would, um, or rather I've given it the name of the keystrokes you need to hit in order to change the color of this background. Okay, so it's either command or control, shift and Y. So with that layer selected, command shift Y or control shift Y will open up your solid settings and you can then change the color of your background accordingly. All right, so I'd like you to choose whatever color you'd like because before we even start with our animation, I'm going to show you a fantastic feature that uh, is built into the Adobe software. 
So right now our character is quite bland. He's just this super pale dude with blue lips. And that's fine. But what I want us to do is we're going to go in our project panel to layers. We are going to go to the lip sync class file week three layers. And I'm going to select any one of these layers and just right click and say reveal in finder. So I'm just right clicking on any one of these layers and saying reveal in finder. That will then open up your folder for you and it will select the Illustrator file. Double clicking on that to open Illustrator. That might take you guys a couple of moments. But once it's open, this is what our character actually looks like. This is just the sum of his parts that have been rigged inside of After Effects. Now, the fantastic thing about Adobe After Effects, Illustrator, and Photoshop, or rather most of the Adobe softwares really, is that they have got a dynamic link. And what this means is, I have now imported this information into After Effects, right? As long as I don't rename any of these layers, so please do not rename any of these layers, please don't delete anything, please don't make anything new. The only thing that we're gonna do is just change the color. So I'm gonna select my body, double click on the little white color block for the color picker. And I'm gonna make my character bright orange. You can make your character whatever color you like. Please do vary, it doesn't have to be orange like mine. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to, just holding down shift, click on these layers over here. These are the eyelids. And again, double clicking on the color fill, which is currently like a dark gray. We're gonna set that to dark orange or I will at least, you can set yours to the dark version of whatever color you set your body to. And then we're gonna hit Command or Control S to overwrite this Illustrator save file. Now, because we've only overwritten the visual information, we haven't changed any of the labeling uh, conventions in this file, it will automatically update inside of After Effects. How dope is that? So any changes that I make, as long as I've planned ahead and I have all the layers that I need and that I've labeled those layers correctly, I can jump back and forth between Photoshop and Illustrator or um, After Effects, Illustrator, etc., And I can make little changes like this, overwrite the save file, and it will then update inside of After Effects for me. All right. So we are now looking at a slightly less boring character. Okay. Now, the first thing that we're going to do when it comes to working with um, or creating a lip sync animation is we need to plot out the guides for our mouth shapes. All right. So if we go into footage brackets audio and we find our file here, he doesn't even moisturize. I'm just going to click and drag that to the top of my timeline. You'll see that it's only about one minute and 18 seconds long. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of my timeline file here. And on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit N for NATO, which will end my um, sort of workspace in line with that audio clip. All right, so we play it back. It doesn't even moisturize. You'll see that the mouth shapes kind of just move as they go just in a linear shape. We haven't provided any structure to those mouth shapes, but we'll do that in our second step. Okay. So if you're doing this now for your own voiceover animation, just uh, shorten the length of your timeline to the length of your audio clip. Hit N for NATO on your keyboard. Right click on this gray bar and select trim comp to work area. And that just means that we don't have any excess time in our timeline. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off layer six for now, that's our mouth shapes, because uh, I don't wanna be distracted by this visual information. Then I'm gonna select layer one, and I'm going to hit A on my keyboard twice, or oh, sorry, L on my keyboard twice, LL, not AA, it's a different software. If you hit L on your keyboard twice in short succession, it will open up the layers waveform. And this gives us our visual information to see where those lines of dialogue are occurring. Okay. Now, this is probably one of the most time-consuming parts of lip sync animation, but it really does make our life a lot easier later down the line. So, if I play this back... It doesn't even moisturize. I need to now start figuring out where my character starts forming his mouth shapes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen out for major sounds, uh, letter sounds uh, is what I mean. So essentially the sounds that would correspond 
with the mouth shapes. So the R sound, the E sound, I, O, A, F and V mouth shape, S and N mouth shape, L, W, C, H or S, H, M, B or P, and then the resting mouth shape. All right, so we've got all of these different shapes to work with, and we need to plot out how we're going to align these shapes with the audio file. Now, thankfully, there's a pretty simple way to do this, and it's something that um, I've been keen to introduce to you guys for a while because I believe it might help with um, plotting out keyframes in the future. But if we take a look on our timeline to the far right, in line with the gray workspace bar, there is this strange looking little shield icon. And if you hover over it, it says comp marker bin drag to left to get new marker. Now this is pretty cool. If I click and drag this out, or if I simply click on it, it will generate a little tag that I can shift up and down the timeline. If I click on that, it will simply create the tag in line with where my indicator is. And you'll see that it then numbers those tags for me. Now I can shift those up and down the timeline. And if I don't want them anymore, I simply need to drag them all the way to the right until that shield icon turns blue again. When I release, it will then have deleted that marker. Okay. Now the cool thing about these little tags is that if you double click on it, it will actually let you uh, type some information in. So rather than just saying one, I would type in my first mouth shape here, for example, let's say it was an ah, uh, say okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the timeline, listening to the audio and placing these little markers in time with where we hear the major mouth movements. Then we can use that as a guide for where we're going to create our keyframes on layer six, which is our mouth shapes layer. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this little marker here. We're gonna start from scratch. First couple of frames, we have no sound. He doesn't. Right over here, we can see as the audio form begins. He doesn't. He says he, so there's an H over here. So I'm simply going to align myself on the timeline, click on that little shield to create my first marker, and I'm going to type in H for he. He doesn't. Okay. Then I need to listen through again. He doesn't. He doesn't. Doesn't. He doesn't occurs over here. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Doesn't. He doesn't. All right, so I'll align myself there and I'm going to type in D for doesn't. All right, which means that after the H, we're going to have an E sound. So I'm just going to move in a little marker here and I'm going to just type in E, E, just so that I know that it's a he. All right, and then doesn't. Doesn't he? Uh, we can put a little marker here and I'm just going to call that UH. He doesn't even moisturize. Doesn't even. Doesn't even. There's an N over here. Doesn't even. And it's literally just the case of listening through, placing these markers in the correct position so that we get the timing for it right, and then continuing from there. So in order to speed this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take the, the process of listening through and placing these markers in the correct positions. I'll speed up that portion of the tutorial video for you guys, and then uh, I'll show you or read out exactly by referring to the time indicator at the bottom of our composition panel here. At 0, 3 seconds, we have an H at etc, etc, etc. All right, so I'll dive in. I'll see you guys in a couple of moments. All right, so I've gone through and I have now labeled out some major mouth sounds. Now the labeling for you can be anything that makes sense. For me, I just use a single letter to describe the mouth shape and then a double letter again to describe the shape. So it's not an E, eh, it's an E sound. As It's just so that I can tell the difference between the two. But if I play these back, I believe I've got them in the right place. So, Taking a look here at the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 mark at the bottom of our composition panel here, the H is in line with all zeros, 0, 3. We then have another marker at 0, 4, 
another mark at 0 0.5. So pretty much on the second marks, uh, we then have a marker at 0, uh, frame 6, frame 7, and frame 8. Then we have a marker on frame 11, frame 13, frame 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, one second mark, one second, one frame, one second, three frames, and then finally, one second, 13 frames. Don't stress if you didn't get those exactly, because while we are busy moving the keyframes around for the mouth, I'll be able to tell you exactly where to position them. Okay, so now that we have plotted out the position for, or have essentially gone through the process of having plotted out the position for these mouth shapes, we can actually begin animating. Now, in order to do that, we are going to um, apply what we call time remapping. Okay, now time remapping is a little bit difficult to explain, especially if I can't look you in the eyes and try and use my hands to tell you what it is. But essentially what time remapping does is it allows me to jump to different points in time on a layer. So right now the mouth shapes layer, um, layer six, we're going to right click on that layer. We're going to go to time and we are going to select enable time remapping. So that's right clicking on layer six, hovering over the time option and selecting enable time remapping. Now, when you click on that, you'll notice two things happen. First, the layer um, sort of collapses itself down. We see that there is a time remap position here. We've got two keyframes on that layer and the layer has also extended further than it initially did. So if I just quickly undo that, you'll see that our layer actually initially ended uh, a couple of frames before the end of the animation. But once we've applied time remapping, it will extend that all the way to the end of the composition. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to delete the last keyframe from layer six. So the second keyframe at the end of our timeline, we're just going to delete that and our mouth will be stuck in this ah position. Okay. Now, I just want to see... We're going to go to the H position in time, uh, uh, sort of in line with our timeline here. So this is um, at the, if you want to type in, you simply need to click on this little uh, time indicator. You can type in 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. This is where our first keyframe is going to be. So I'm going to move my first keyframe to that point. And what I'm going to do is I am going to scrub just holding down command or control so that I'm only working with individual numbers but I am going to scrub through and find the correct mouth shape. Now, we should have these showing. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, let me just quickly experiment here. I might need to make an adjustment there. Okay, cool. All right, so what you guys can do for me is undo these steps so that we can uh, all go through them together. So going into the mouth shapes layer right now, all of um, the text has been set as a guide layer. And that just means that it's not being shown in our first composition. So what we're going to do is we're going to select layers one down to 13, right click on it. And you'll see in the top third selection area, there is guide layer, which is currently ticked. We're going to untick that go back into the lip sync class composition here. And then around layer six, you're going to see that there is a yellow square, essentially, this is a mask that has been placed on that layer. So if you grab the two bottom points, and you drag them down low, it will reveal the name of that mouth shape. All right, I've just set this mask up so that we can then hide the uh, the label of the mouth shape later. All right, so we've moved the, that mask indicator down below here so we can actually see the type. And now holding down command or control and scrubbing to the right, I'm just going to find something that looks like it fits for that H sound. He doesn't even moisturize. So I'm going to go, we don't have mouth shapes for every single phonetic sound that we have, unfortunately. But what I'm going to go for is I'm going to just use the AH, which will be our very first keyframe there for that mouth shape. And we can come back and change these as we go, which is great. Okay, 
Moving one frame to the right, this is where he says the E sound. So I'm just going to, again, holding down command or control and scrubbing to the right or left, I'm going to find a mouth shape that looks like he. There we go. There's the E sound. So he. He doesn't eat. We're gonna find a D sound next. Sorry, so the E goes at uh, the fourth on the fourth frame, and the D sound is gonna go on the fifth frame. So we're gonna find where our mouth closes there, and I think we can use he d d just sort of feeling where my tongue is for this. He doesn't kind of can use the S and N mouth shape for that. I think. Let's rather use the F and B, F, V shape. He doesn't even moisturize. So that's on the fifth frame, and I'm using the F, V mouth shape. One frame to the right. He doesn't. So I'm going to have the A uh sound shape here. Um, he does. Seventh frame, we need the S sound. So we'll use this uh, mouth shape over here, S and N. And then in line with the eighth keyframe or the eighth frame rather, I'm gonna type in, we just want something here. So we're gonna use the F and V. It doesn't even. All right, so <clears throat> it's kind of just a, a game of Placing a keyframe, seeing, okay, does that work, does that work, does that work, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rest of the animation, placing the basic mouth shapes, and then we can come back and we can refine them. All right. So moving to uh, frame 11, this is where he says even. So I'm going to put in the E sound, E, 13th frame, we're going to put in V. F, V, 15th frame, we'll use the E sound again. And on the 16th frame, we'll use the S, N shape there. So he doesn't even. He doesn't even moist. <clears throat> 18th frame, we're going to find the M sound that's towards the end here. I'm um, going to use M. 20th frame, we're going to go with the O sound because that kind of gives us the most sort of visual guide for that moisturizing sound. Uh, the S is going to go on frame 22. Moisturize. At the one second mark, I'm going to change this to the CHSH sound. One second, one frame. We'll go back to the uh, ER. So that's E. One second, three frames. This is going to be the I sound. And then at the one second, 13 frame mark, this is just going to be SN. Let's see what that looks like. He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. All right. So something, sorry, this was a, a pretty big step that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning and something that I've uh, managed to forget myself. But part of the reason why our mouth shapes are currently not looking so lacquer is because they are linear keyframes, which means that our time remapping is just scrubbing through a whole different bunch of mouth movements at the sort of same time. Okay, so we're just going to quickly select all of our keyframes on layer six. We are going to just uh, maybe go back to the beginning of the timeline, right click and say toggle hold keyframe. Okay, so we want our keyframes to be on toggle hold. So that's right click toggle hold keyframe. It doesn't even moisturize. And that just holds the mouth in the correct position for as long as necessary. It doesn't even moisturize. It doesn't, it doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. Okay, pretty basic. He doesn't even moisturize. But it's working. 
I'm pretty happy with that. At the moment, our mouth is kind of just starting off in an open gape and uh, it kind of ends and, and holds the final position there. So what we're gonna do is we do have a resting mouth position. So at the very beginning of my timeline, I'm going to just move and select the final rest position there. And I'll remember to set that to toggle hold keyframe. It doesn't even moisturize. And then at the very end, maybe in line with the 15 frame mark, I'm going to create the, or rather place the resting mouth position there as well again. Okay, now I'm gonna go through between the words. Thankfully our character over here, he sort of, uh, the words follow along quite nicely. But if you find that your line of dialogue has a pause or a gap, please do remember to add the keyframe for the resting mouth shape, uh, or at least one of the closed mouth shapes. So if the resting one doesn't work, we can also use the BP shape. It just gives us a bigger resting mouth, essentially. It doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. Okay. And that is that for the lip sync portion of, uh, of our animation here. Um, once we are done sort of placing our mouth shapes and we're happy with them, we can just select the bottom two corners of our mask on layer six and bring them back up to hide those letters. He doesn't even moisturize. It doesn't even moisturize. And then it's time to start animating the actual face. So right now this was the, the sort of like major focal point of the animation. But now we need to build up our animation around that. Okay, so we're done with our audio clip. I'm going to collapse that and lock it so that I don't accidentally play around with it. And I'm going to lock layer six because I don't want to mess up any of my keyframes there. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is I am going to starting off with my big movements and then building the smaller movements from there. So we're gonna to go to layer two, which is the face null. I'm gonna hit P for position. And I think what we're gonna do is we're kind of just gonna have our character squint as he talks and maybe he kind of just moves his head slightly to the right um, as though he's addressing someone for this instance. So this is where you would refer to your recorded reference footage in order to see what your character is going to do. So for P for position, I'm going to create my very first keyframe just in line with um, the first open mouth shape. Typically when a human being starts talking, they'll move their head as they're talking, not necessarily before or after. Um, so we're just going to have our position over here. And then if I listen back, what kind of movement suits this? He doesn't even moisturize. I think what we'll do is I'm going to have him shake his head for uh, maybe twice, and then he's just going to look off to the right. Nice, simple movement. Okay. So I've created my very first keyframe on um, frame three in my timeline. I'm going to shift 10 frames to the right. We don't actually have a lot of time to work with. So uh, maybe five frames to the right. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to then have the face move to the right. So I'm just shifting it up ever so slightly, just pulling that face slightly across there. Five frames to the right, one, two, three, four, five. Let's pull it across to the other side. So he's busy shaking his head here. He doesn't even moist. 10 frames to the right, we're going to go back across to the right hand side. Sorry, that was five frames, not 10. I'm so used to working in um, in values of 10 at this point. Okay, so let me just call these out again. Very first position keyframe, our face is at the center of the body. That starts at the three frame mark. Five frames to the right, I've shifted it to the right hand side of the face. Five frames to the right, it's to the left hand side of the face. Five frames to the right, back to the right side of the face. Five frames to the right, back to the left, so we have the character shaking his head twice. He even moisturize. And then what I'll do is 10 frames to the right. I'm just going to bring this face back across and down. All right. So what I've done here is I've shifted my face from the left to the right, not all the way across, maybe to about there and then just down slightly so that essentially he lowers his face. He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. Okay. 
So we've got that basic movement going there. What we're gonna do then is zoom all the way in here. This is now the path that our animation is following, these lines over here. And what I wanna do is I just wanna make sure that using my Convert Vertex tool, remember this tool can be found hidden under the pen tool. I am going to add some curves that kind of just make it so that the face pulls itself down. So it's essentially going to be moving in this arc, which typically our um, biological movement would encourage. So this one's going to go down here like that. This one can kind of be rounded there. Where's this one going from there? Okay, so we're just going to play with those handles there until it doesn't even moisture. Our face is moving up and down along that path. All right, we'll come back and apply easing to that later. What we can do is um, let's do our pupil or sorry, our eyelids next. That's layers four and five. I'm going to hit R for rotation. Uh, oh, sorry, P, not rotation, P for position to create their first keyframes. Okay, then what we're going to do is just as our character is shaking his head, so over the course of those five frames, in line with my second position keyframe, I'm just going to move my eyelids closer together. My character's a little bit squint, but that's okay. Because we're just going to close those eyes up like that. All right, so just so that our character is closed. He doesn't even moisturize. Okay, so his eyes can stay closed during that motion. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever tried shaking your head with your eyes open, but you can get a little motion sick doing it. So then I'm going to jump out to my second last position keyframe. I'm just going to close up layer six so I don't get confused with my frames. Second last keyframe in line with the first keyframe. This is where I'll open them again. So what I'm going to do is I need a duplicate of their current frames. I remember in class last week, I showed you that by clicking on these little empty keyframe buttons, it will automatically generate a keyframe for that layer's value. And then in line with our final keyframe here, we'll just open our eyelids again. So I'm just going to copy and paste the first set of, of keyframes. It doesn't even moisturize. It doesn't. Okay, and that just creates the illusion then of our character eyes closed while he is putting his head back and forth and then opening as he eases into his final position. Okay, then we need our pupils. And we'll just hit P for position there. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my timeline in line with the other keys and I am going to just create my first position keyframe. All right. As my character is closing his eyes, so over the course of those five frames, what I'm going to do is I am going to bring my pupils up and to the right, or sorry, to the left. And what that does is it makes it look as though my character is rolling his eyes backwards into his head. Okay, so for my second keyframe, all I've done is I have shifted the pupils up and to the left. Okay, he then shakes his head. We're going to align myself with my second last keyframe again. Click on the little empty keyframe button on that layer to generate its current position. And then as our character opens his eyes, what we're going to do is have him kind of roll them a little bit. So I think maybe that takes 10 frames. So in five frames, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to shift the pupils across to the right. And then in five, they'll come back to where they were at the very beginning. So I just copy and paste my first keyframe there. And you'll see it kind of makes a, a loop path over here. So I'm just going to play with those handles. Make it look as though not everything is moving in this robotic straight line. And the eyes will kind of just roll along. We won't see much of their movement, but the subtlety of it will sort of uh, compile. He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. Okay. 
And that is it for the basics of our motion. What we can then do is simply apply easing to the keyframes we have on screen. So I'm going to hit F9 for those keys there. And I might want to then maybe just uh, shift everything so that they're not all happening at the same time. So if I grabbed all my keyframes here um, for layers three, four, and five and shift them one to the right, and then I'll shift the pupils one to the right again. And this is kind of just so that... He doesn't even moisturize. He doesn't even moisturize. Just so that they're not all aligned and happening at the same time. You can obviously go and play with the graph editor for the movement. So say, for example, with our eye rolling here, as it moves back into that position, I want it to ease quite nicely. So I'll dive into the graph editor. Remember that this is our speed graph. If you're looking at something that looks like this, it's just the wrong view. All you need to do is right click anywhere in this uh, graph editor panel here, select speed graph. I want it to ease into that position quite nicely. All right, so when it starts moving, I'm quite fine with the way that it's moving there, but I kind of just want to make sure that it eases at the end. All right, for the head movements, we're gonna move into the graph editor as well. So if that's layer two, let's jump into the graph editor. And for this sort of shaking motion, I'm pretty happy with the, the movement that we have in the graph, but we can always sort of just make it a little bit more esoteric. So what I'm gonna do is just in line with each of my keyframes, I'm just gonna go and sharpen them up a little bit. So in line with each of my keys, just pinching the, um, the handles to be slightly co closer to each of them. And then for the last one, when our face sort of comes into its resting point, what I'll do there is maybe just pinch these in slightly and then we'll have a curve at the end just so that the face moisturize. eases towards this, the, the final it point. Even moisturize. All right, so not much sort of needed to do in the graph editor for this rig, thankfully. Um, but obviously, depending on your facial expressions and the expressions that you're creating, um, that could change. All right, so it will vary on your own personal um, lip sync progress mark video. All right. But that is it for lip syncing. So if I sort of just run through the steps again, it's importing your, your audio um, for, as your first step. Then what you're going to do is um, with that audio layer selected, you're going to hit L twice. LL will bring up its waveform. You listen through it meticulously. This should probably take the longest amount of time or one of the longest amount of time for a lip sync animation is listening through and making sure that we align our little markers correctly. We then selected layer six, which was our mouth shapes. And if I hit U to bring up their keyframes there, we then applied time remapping. We set our keyframes to toggle hold, and we simply then um, scrubbed through to select the correct mouth shapes, remembering that we can move this yellow square up and down, which will then reveal or hide those um, indicators for what the mouth shape represents. Okay, so fairly simple. I hope I haven't lost you along the way. If you did get lost, please do feel free to reach out to me by email. Otherwise, what I want you to do is once you've completed this animation, render it. You're going to submit it to the uh, lip sync animation class exercise. And then you'll go and apply what you've learned and um, animate your own progress mark. All right. Cool. That should be that. If you guys get stuck on YouTube, let me know. Otherwise, this video has gone on long enough. I'll see you guys next week for our force and weight animation. Ciao. Have a great week further.